Hi friends, I have an easy cheese recipe for you today. Come into my kitchen. Let me show you how to make cheese curds. The following recipe uses two gallons, but you'll notice today I have four with me, and that's because I plan to make a double batch. I plan to make an orange colored curd and a white colored curd today. So follow along with me, let's get started. Here's a tip I learned along the way. If you're using pasteurized, non-homogenized milk like I am, it can sometimes be difficult to pour. It's not a problem. Just take a sanitized knife and pierce the cream layer on the top, swish it around a little, and it will make your life so much easier when you pour this milk. Take two gallons of pasteurized, unhomogenized milk and slowly heat it to 90 degrees. And while you're heating the milk, you can stir occasionally. You'll notice since I'm making a double batch, I'm just going to be moving in between each pot. It doesn't really matter if you use the same utensils. It'll be fine. I've decided to switch the pots because this is a smaller pot on a bigger burner and I'm noticing that the temperature is heating up quite a bit faster. So I'm going to make this easy on myself and try to get the temperatures to rise at about the same time. So I'm just going to put the smaller pot on the smaller burner, larger pot on the larger burner. I think that'll work just fine. Oh yeah, this will be more even for sure. Once the target temp of 90 degrees is reached, you'll add a quarter teaspoon of mesophilic culture and just sprinkle it on the top. And you'll do this to each batch if you're making two. and let it rest for five minutes. So we'll turn off the heat. And we'll cover the pots. We'll see you in five minutes. Once the five minutes has elapsed, you can go ahead and stir in the culture into the milk. Now, if you'd like to make orange cheese curds, this is your opportunity to add the annatto. I have kids in my life that tell me that orange cheese curds taste better. <laughs> Shh, it's not true. We'll just add a half a teaspoon of annatto. You'll stir in the annatto for one minute. And 
then you'll cover the pots and let them rest for 45 minutes. See you in 45 minutes. The 45 minute ripening time is over and now we'll set the curd. I'm using pasteurized, non-homogenized milk, so I'm going to dilute calcium chloride in a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water first. So, you'll take a half a teaspoon of calcium chloride and add it to the water. And then you'll add it to the milk. and then you'll stir it in. Stir for one minute using a top and down stirring motion. You'll take a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water and to it you'll add a half teaspoon of rennet. and then stir up and down for no longer than one minute. Then you'll cover the pots and let it rest for 45 minutes. All right, 45 minutes has elapsed and now it's time to see if we have a clean break. So you just take your curd knife or a long knife, insert it into the center of the curds and pull it back. Here's what you're looking for. You're looking for the whey to seep into the crack and that one looks really good. So I'll check the other. And yes, definitely. We have a clean break, so now it's time to cut the curds. Cut the curds vertically, then horizontally in one half inch cubes. Now cover the pot and let the curds heal for five minutes. Once the curds have healed, it's time to cook the curds. You'll take these curds up to 104 degrees over a 30 minute period of time.
while you're bringing the curds up to temperature, stir occasionally. We want to take the full 30 minutes to reach the 104 degree target temp. And once your target temperature of 104 is reached, you can go ahead and turn off the heat. You'll just want to maintain it at 104 degrees over the next 30 minutes. So cook the curds for the next 30 minutes at a steady 104 degrees. You can stir a little more vigorously now because the curds aren't quite as fragile. By the end of the 30 minutes, you should have curds about the size of peanuts. Once the 30 minutes has elapsed, you can test the curds and see if they'll stick together and then come apart easily. You want to take the curds, squeeze them gently, yeah, and then they should just break apart really easily. Perfect. I'll cover the pots and allow the curds to sink to the bottom for 15 minutes. And now it's time to prepare the draining area. Take a fine mesh colander and place it in the sink. And then you'll drain the curds into the colander. Very gently squeeze it into a solid mass. Just a real light squeeze. Place a clean towel over the curds and let that curd slab rest for 15 minutes. I'll complete the same step with the second batch. Very, very gently shape this into a slab. Don't push too hard. See you in 15 minutes. We're moving on to the cheddaring process and it's time to prepare the sink area with a water bath so we can place our milk bins in the water. So you fill the sink with hot water. Now you'll take your pot and you'll place it into the hot water. And you'll take the cheese slab and very gently you'll lay it into the bottom of the pot. It's very fragile at this point. And now you'll take an empty milk jug and you'll fill it half full with hot water. And then you'll take the jug and place it on top of the slab. And cover the whole pot.
pot with a towel. And now I'll repeat the process with the second pot. Here's what we do after the first cheddaring step. You'll remove the cloth and remove the hot liquid. Then you'll reach in and you'll take out the slab. And carefully place it on a cutting board. Now, there's a fair bit of whey here, and you'll want to drain that before we flip it over. So you can drain it into a pot, or just down the sink, whatever is fine. And then, you'll take your slab, you'll turn it over, place it back into the pot. and replace the hot water and cover it again. And now we'll do the same thing with the second pot. That's the cheddaring process. You will repeat this step eight times total for a total of two hours. I am on flip number four and I'm removing the slab and I've noticed that the slab is getting pretty thin so I've made a decision and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut the slab just in half with a sanitized knife. And I'm going to stack them on top of each other and then just place them back into the pot. During the eight step cheddaring process, just make sure that the water stays at least at 102 degrees, both in the sink and in the jug. Once the cheddaring is complete, the curds will have a rubbery texture and they should be shiny. Go ahead and cut the curds into one inch cubes. Then you'll sprinkle a tablespoon and a half of non-iodized salt onto the cheese curds and mix it in thoroughly. And once you've finished mixing in the salt, you just take a towel and you cover them overnight. We'll see you in the morning. And the next morning, you'll be rewarded with some beautiful, delicious, squeaky cheese curds. These look amazing. I've decided to weigh them because I'd like to understand the yield. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in just a minute. Typically speaking, Two gallons of milk usually produces about two pounds of cheese, depending on the cheese. And we're right on. Two pounds, three ounces. That's a great yield. Hey, hey, get your paws off my cheese curds. And that's it. This is how to make homemade cheese curds. It's a great beginning cheese making recipe because it doesn't require any special equipment or even a cheese cave to mature. You can enjoy this cheese as early as the next morning. Oh, wait, one more thing. Have you ever wondered why do cheese curds squeak? Well, I have an answer for you. And that's because they're fresh. 
so as long as you keep them at room temperature, the cheese curds will squeak when you eat them. But once you put them in the refrigerator, they'll lose their squeak. It, by the way, you can keep them in the refrigerator for up to two weeks, if they last that long. I plan to use mine for poutine tonight. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your support. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And we will see you in the next episode.